you can hear me from down there. I've done this before, but this will be... I just feel like doing it again, because these Napoleonic battles are such a blast. So we're going to go through the steps of how I build a Napoleonic battlefield. And, uh, yeah, I hope this is helpful, or at least entertaining. And, uh, yeah, this is going to be the start of a whole wonderful weekend of me of just uh, insane Napoleonics. So, uh, cool. All right, you guys are great. Hang, hold on to your seats, get comfortable, and uh, we'll see you in a minute. All right, uh, for those of you who haven't, uh, are new to the channel, I am kind of blessed to live in an older home with a very large basement. Uh, it's a little bit dusty. You can hear my feet grinding in the dirt down here, but it's... <laughs> It is concrete, but it's uh, it's not the cleanest. But definitely not a finished basement. But I'm blessed to have a, a large room here to, for me to game in, and that's really what's clutch to me. Plus, uh, I don't have to... None of my family or my daughters want to come down here, um, so I can leave a game set up for a long time, and no one really minds. Uh, my family's looking for me. Yeah, I'm down here. So, uh, 15 by 7 foot table. There are plans this winter to add on another 12 feet at least over uh, to my right, another room. So we'll continue this battlefield uh, and just continue to have massive and massive and more massive battles. And uh, uh, it's just, this hobby is awesome. And then these, I'm a huge fan of mass battles. So uh, uh, having more room is just all the better for me. So I uh, plan on painting more and more Napoleonics and uh yeah that's it and everything well not, that's one thing i'm gonna do i'm gonna do plenty of other things too but that's one thing i'm gonna do so uh right, we're gonna start off here with the blank slate and uh, we'll start adding on hills and then we'll go from uh we'll go from there all right i do like a hilly battlefield so got some uh this is uh insulation foam board from lowe's or whatever DIY shop or home improvement store you've got in your local town or city and just kind of cut them up with a reciprocating saw and the different shapes. I've got a bunch of different templates over there and uh, whenever I need to modify something I just break out my uh, DeWalt uh, reciprocating saw and start chopping and make spray great sort of green foam all over the place. So uh, yeah so here's the this is the beginning of the battle I kind of thought of this the other night of what I want. I've got an idea of what I want for objectives and hills and where everybody is. So the, uh, the Seventh Coalition is going to be on that side of the board, and uh, the Army du Nord will be coming on this side of the board attacking. Next up, we get some skin in the game. Uh, put our fur battle mats over the top of all that terrain and just try to brush it out a little bit so it looks kind of like a grass the like grass kind of pops up a little bit I'll continue to tweak this as you know it's kind of you kind of rub your hand against the grain to make this stuff kind of stand up and make it look like waving grass which is uh, kind of the effect you want or at least I want hopefully so getting down into the battlefield it looks cool Take a quick peek down the old uh, plains here. So we've got some good terrain to fight over. I need to push down some stuff a little bit in the middle there. And it's as you put down more things on the battlefield too, it'll kind of bring it down and level it out and make it look a little better. Okay, now I usually put the built-up areas or villages, whatever you want to call them, in about now just to. Uh, uh, then I'll build around those because you got your if you want to do roads or you want to do rivers or bridges or anything like that you want to know where your buildings are going to be first so it kind of ties it all together in a logical kind of way all right we're going with uh, just three built-up areas like the French headquarters here allied headquarters there and then just another one on top of the, the hill it can be, there'll be objectives probably. I haven't thought all the way through the scenario yet. I'm just kind of throwing things down here. All right, um, I'm debating about foregoing roads and water. Um, this water is usually limiting. So we're gonna skip that. We're gonna go right into the trees. 
these mass battles, a lot of times trees end up being more cosmetic than anything else. But I did want to have some woods right there uh, in the center, just to, that'll probably be the big tactical thing. Um, as far as trees go, uh, everything else is pretty just kind of eye candy. Uh, the big thing on these battlefields, of course, will be the, the troops, which I think we'll get to. Oh gosh, I can start putting troops out. That's insane. Okay. Uh, normally in GDA 2, which this battle is, uh, there's a process for when you're playing an opponent of basically putting down markers of where your battalions or your brigades are going to be and then they roll for uh, to see if they can spot them uh, or not and that the defense guy sets up first and or the attacker then tries to hope they get good intel and then they set up and then whatever wasn't spotted uh, sets up afterwards and the game will begin uh, play myself I probably could fool myself but there's no real point uh, <laughs> so uh, we'll just go from uh, we'll start setting up stuff and I have an order of battle already drawn up on a sheet of paper so we'll go from there oh it's at the pause for a minute but this is my uh, beginning of my Russo Austro Prussian forces as they continue to grow I'm up to two brigades now so I'm kind of excited and they've got an artillery uh, battery with them as well so Getting some headway. Three Prussian uh, infantry brigades now, uh, five Russian, and uh, two Austrian, both with uh, two brigade commanders, von Steinmetz and Semines Semenowski or something like that. I can't remember. The, I'm probably pronouncing his name wrong. He was at the Battle of Leipzig. Uh, I need to even look up, see if the guy survived. Not A lot of people died at Leipzig, so this guy could have died too. I just kind of picked him out of an order of battle. All right. Get the rest of these guys on the table. Just wanted to uh, drool a little bit on uh, non-British guys. British are coming now with the uh, Hanoverians. All right, half half the combatants are on the battlefield. Should make all the uh, all you British people excited. Just a few British flags. And way off in the distance it's Russian time and Prussian and Austrian some more British uh, battalions behind that uh, built-up area okay we we'll look from the other side a couple skirmish bases short I think I've got the miniatures to put together. I'll just, uh, I can knock those out really quick. And here's from the other side. Oh yeah, baby. That looks nice. Okay, get the French set up, and the battlefield will be ready. Sweet. I'm drooling a little bit. Sorry, gents. And then the French. You know, forces of Napoleon Bonaparte, the Army du Nord. I'll have to stand up here in a minute, but uh, they have arrived on the battlefield. Yes, combination of uh, French, Italians, Swiss, and Polish. They're going to be outgunned, outnumbered, but not outgunned. Uh, it kind of worked out well for me. I have more uh, coalition forces but I have more French artillery so that's kind of uh, 
symbolic of the the French victory at the uh, at that rear guard action, which was our last battle. Uh, let's say it took out some of the uh, coalition artillery, so they're going to be out undergunned for this uh, conflict. Yes, it just looks amazing. I love Napoleonics. All right, take a whole look at the whole battle for from a different angle. So you see, you don't have to have a ton of terrain, you just have to have a ton of troops, and you, uh, the battlefield fills up beautifully. You look from the uh, Austro-Prussian, Russian side where they're coming in. The French are laid out nicely. British, amazing. Huge concentration over there. All right, so that's a, a battlefield. Uh, what I'm gonna do next is, well, I'm gonna do a quick video for some members of the channel. Give them the opportunity to uh, say, hey, uh, what, what would you guys like the uh, different Corps commanders and the uh, Army generals to uh, accomplished tactically in the battle and I will uh, listen to their suggestions and try and incorporate it into my tactics um, and uh, yeah so and then we'll kick off the battle we're using General Day Arme 2 and uh, it should be it'll probably I mean not gonna lie to you, it'll probably take this week to uh, get this all done I'll, I'll shoot out a couple uh, small little things in the middle just to go hey um this is what's happening <laughs> quick little previews of stuff but nothing nothing to give away the overall battle just so it'll be all, all that more enjoyable when you actually when i do get it done and get the whole video out so uh looking forward to this i hope you guys found this helpful uh i and then i certainly hope that this battle when i get the video and the battle report all out uh you'll find that enjoyable it should be a, an epic clash of uh, the two European juggernauts, basically, of the uh, the French coalition versus the uh, Seventh Coalition. Uh, I've got to, I know I've got to get some more troops out here. That people have made requests for uh, Polish lancers and stuff like that, so I definitely need to increase my cavalry. But I do have uh, five squadrons of each. I think there's forty. 43 I think infantry battalions for the coalition and there might be 40 for the uh, Army du Nord so you're talking over 80 infantry battalions of 32 units each and uh, 10 cavalry squadrons with uh, 16 uh, uh, cavalry troops each and it's a lot of artillery uh, they are going to be close range there's going to be stuff hitting each other pretty quickly I wanted to deploy everything on the board. There will be some units like kind of in a reserve status, um, but uh, there's nothing going to be coming on later. Everything's on the table. Everything can be seen, and uh, I've kind of hidden some of like the Imperial Guard is behind the, the French command post. Uh, the British Guard is kind of in the rear, but they always seem to get left out of the of these battles so I didn't want to put them too far behind uh, the premise of this entire battle is the the Wellington has almost tricked Napoleon he's he lost his rear guard action but he was able to get some of his forces out lost some of his artillery but he staged up here in a battlefield of his choosing looking strong on the right Napoleon is countered with a lot of his strength on the right you know with the Vistula Legion the, uh, the Italians the Ninth Leger um, most of the heavy stuff is here over. Of course, you know, it's not pathetic over there. I mean, they have uh, three infantry brigades and uh, the entire artillery, uh, I'm sorry, the entire uh, cavalry regiment is over there in the cavalry reserves. And plus the Imperial Guard is here located in the center. So, but the premise in my mind of the battle is the British showed up here. Napoleon moved to give battle 
you know, concentrated his forces. The uh, Wellington was able to hide the fact that there was two brigades of Austro-Prussian-Russian forces approaching from the, uh, I'm trying to think of compass directions here, uh, from the east, because this is, uh, this would be north coming, coming towards me. So uh, we've got five Russian infantry brigades, including the uh, two new ones I've painted, uh, three Prussian infantry, uh, sorry, infantry battalions, sorry. I wish there was five of those brigades. And then I, I haven't added to my Austrians as of yet, just because probably because of abject terror of painting white. Um, but I, I'm gonna do it, it's gonna happen. So uh, I still have unpainted stormtroopers over here, which are kind of followed on the same premise. I just, I've heard nightmares about painting white and I haven't done a very much of it besides some Templar Knights. So, uh, yeah. So they, he was able to hide them almost like Waterloo where uh, the Prussians arrived. But uh, in this case, we've got uh, those 10 infantry battalions from the uh, uh, Austrians, Prussians, and Russians who just arrived on the battlefield. Uh, Napoleon had a... Had a uh, a infantry brigade over here, probably off the camera to his right, of four infantry battalions with some artillery protecting his flank. But now they're going to have to do a little bit more extra duty uh, and might have to draw more forces over there to uh, hold that off from getting crumpled. So that's it. Um, I think there's 12 infantry brigades for the, or sorry, 12 brigades for the British, or the, sorry, the coalition. Uh, under you know six under uh you know one corps commander one on the other the french i think are five and six uh between their corps commanders this will be a core level game of general day army too you'll see more of that later and uh we'll see what the uh, five channel members if they have a chance just uh type out some stuff on their uh in a little chat of the video i'm gonna share with them and if they throw some ideas in and i'm going to incorporate them and i'll i'll mention them to the battle report and uh, we'll see what happens. It should be a blast. I'm just uh, I'm looking to have an awesome battle. I hope you all enjoy it. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's going to be fantastic. All right, that's all I got. And this was me setting up a Napoleonic battlefield. And uh, hopefully we'll have more and more of these Napoleonic battles. And when I continue into the next room, they'll be getting bigger and bigger as my forces continue to uh, just get large and large and large. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Cool. Hope this was helpful. Hope you have a fantastic weekend. Take care. All right. Bye, guys.